Welcome to the Higher Education Access Corner. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Deanna. And today we are going to talk about how to search for scholarships. We're going to offer some great tips. Uh, we're going to tell you about the different types of scholarships that are out there and give you some information on how to avoid the pitfalls. So Deanna, for you, I know with both of us, we're both access partners. And one of the things that we always hear from everybody is, how do we find the scholarships? Um, a lot of times it's coming from the parents, but we want the students to get involved in it. So we're going to talk about the whole scholarship piece. And before we get started, I'm thinking it's probably a good idea to let everybody know about just financial aid in general. Scholarships are one type of financial aid, uh, but in order to apply for all sources, students must complete first the FAFSA, or free application for federal student aid. And then once they do that, it opens up the opportunity to see if they qualify for the federal aid from the government, from the state aid from FIA, which also requires a separate application in itself. Um, it also checks to see if they qualify for your grants and your scholarships, your work study, as well as student loans. Student loans are a viable option, but should be the last resort. And scholarships, of course, which is what we're here to talk about today, really helps everybody focus in, specifically the students, on the free money or what we call the gift aid. Absolutely. So let's get started. So I think it's important for students to know that there are tons of scholarships out there. One of the misconceptions is that, you know, scholarships are hard to get. You know, it's a waste of time doing those applications. But actually, there are so many scholarships out there for a variety of different reasons. There are more scholarships than just for academics and athletics. You can get scholarships because you have a specific talent. You can get scholarships because of community involvement, volunteerism. So I think the biggest message that we want to get through to students and parents, you simply need to look for the scholarships and apply. Apply, apply, apply. So when we're talking about scholarships, we've pretty much got three different types. Mm -hmm. You've got national scholarships, you've got local scholarships, and then you've got scholarships available through the colleges. I think one of the best way things to do is to search for those national scholarships on online databases like fastweb.com. What do you think? I actually, a couple things to that. I agree. I like fastweb.com. Um, but that's where, one of those ones where you're going to have everybody searching all over, all throughout the states. I also say for students, when you're thinking of national uh, scholarship organizations, think of the products and services that they use. A lot of times students will have their favorite fast food a product, their favorite clothing line. Maybe it's Nike. Maybe it's Coca-Cola. Maybe they like going to KFC. Look at all of those particular organizations. Check out their websites. See if they offer scholarships. Most of them do. The names that I just talked about. They do. So I try to get students to get involved, to look just beyond, to look beyond the fast webs or the big national databases. Look at those two, but look at the organizations that you're giving out money to on a regular basis. If you're getting money from them on a regular basis, see if you can get some of that back. And I also say start looking before your senior year in high school. And we'll talk about, you know, the time frames and stuff like that. But start looking early. What products and services do you use? Um, look at those databases that are out there. And don't assume that just because everybody is applying that you will not get the award because somebody is going to get the money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the things that I found really astounding is the amount of scholarship money that goes wasted every year because people aren't taking the time to apply for these scholarships. Forbes estimates that $100 million in scholarships goes wasted every year because they don't get enough applicants. Mm -hmm. So I think that the big message to take home Look for those scholarships, apply for those scholarships. I think a good time to start is probably the summer before the senior year in high school. Mm -hmm. Really hone in on that and then continue to apply for those scholarships until you get out of college. Yep. Something else I wanted to add, just to make it more, a more personal experience that I've shared that I've had. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was last year, it's probably it was probably pre pre-pandemic, so probably 2018 it was, 2018 or 2019. I was at a high school, and this is not a unique experience, it happens quite often. And uh, we were about to do a financial aid night presentation. The counselor comes up and she announces a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And as she's announcing this scholarship, she's talking to the parents. And she says, hey, this organization is offering a scholarship specific to our students who go to this school. And I forget the dollar amount, but it was like maybe 5000 every single year. It's renewable automatically uh, for four years. And she says, so it's at least twenty grand. May have been more, but I'm thinking at least 5000 and she says, I'm announcing it in front of the parents because the deadline was like last week and I didn't get a single senior to apply for it. And we've announced it every single morning on the loudspeaker. I have it posted on our um, website and none of the students have 
are taking it up, taking us up on this. It's free money. And it was kind of like, wow, that was blowing the parents' minds. And so what she said is we're going to open it up for an additional week, but we're sharing the information with the parents so that the parents can then nudge your students to apply for the free money. And that is a common story that happens. That happened in like 2018. And then to give you another experience, me personally, as a student, that happened to me. My oldest brother actually said, hey, there's this guy who came in, he owned a barbershop, came into my barbershop and told me to tell you or any other student I know to fill out this scholarship. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was kind of like one of those students. Ah, I'm already in school. I'm not worried about it. And I didn't do it. Well, then I went back and I did it. He kind of nudged me like, are you really going to pass up free money? So I applied. I got the scholarship. Interesting thing was it was for a scholarship for a student who was Jewish and attended their place of worship. I'm not Jewish. I didn't attend their place of worship. And I wondered, how did I get this scholarship? And when I went to get, accept the award, they told me because we could not get enough students to apply for aid who actually met all of the qualifications. And we wanted to give keep this funding. And if we didn't give it away, we're going to lose it. So we then said, OK, if you don't meet all five qualifications, let's look at someone who meets the four or the three. And I met them. So I'm thinking it's been decades since I've been in school. So between when I left school and at least 2018, the same thing is still happening. So when you're saying um, and using those numbers about how many students um, or how the dollar amount of scholarships that are going un unnoticed or untouched, it still resonates. And I'm hopefully the students and the listeners who are there are paying attention to that because you don't want to leave any money on the table if you don't have to. Absolutely. That's a great point. I think that students and parents really need to hone in on those local scholarships the local scholarships are going to have a, let less, a lot less competition, mm -hmm. so the likelihood of a student being awarded one of those scholarships is much higher. A great resource for students to check in with is their counselors at the high school. A lot of the local foundations make the high schools aware of the scholarships that they're offering, so students really need to pay attention to that and really apply for those scholarships. Uh, I was at a college a couple years ago, and they indicated they had a scholarship for about $6,000. Couldn't get a lot of people to apply. They had one applicant, and that is the student that received the scholarship. So I think that, that is the, these types of stories um, really resonate with the fact that a lot of the um, hesitancy is just not doing the application. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about, you know, some different tips on what students can do mm -hmm. to increase their likelihood of getting scholarships. So one of the things, some scholarships are going to want students to create an essay. Mm -hmm. They really want to pay attention to the details of the questions that that scholarship organization is asking them. Answer the questions that they're asking you, give as much detail as possible, when we talk to scholarship organizations and we ask them, with all things being equal, why was one student given a scholarship over another, they point back to that essay. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily who has the best essay. Of course, you want to make sure there's no errors and things like that. But you want to make sure that you are answering the questions that they're asking you and providing as much detail as possible. I agree. Throw personality into it is what I, I tell students a lot of times because, like you said, Although those people who are judging those scholarships or looking at them, they're seeing the same information because generally it's the students who do have the top grades or very involved in extracurricular activities. Those are the ones usually that the scholarship applications come in from. But it shouldn't be. It should be every student who qualifies. However, what usually will set them apart is the essay. And I've been on the other side. I don't know if you've had mm -hmm. an opportunity also yes. to, to be that person uh, who's looking at the scholarships. And it makes it tough because you're like, wow, these are all great uh, stories, all great students on paper, and then you get someone who shares a story and it's personal, and they share their triumphs. Sometimes they, sh they share um, their struggles and how they're overcoming them, what their goals are, but you can act, they actually put a little personality into it, and it makes it easier for one person now to be set aside from the other. So I always stress that, but I also say, if the scholarship essay question does not allow you to elaborate, then you stick to the script. So if they're looking for a specific answer, also with the scholarship essay, sometimes they have a word limit. So if they say, do not go over 300 words, do not go over 300 words. Sometimes there are counters that they will scan through a system and they count them and they will exclude the student if they went over. So it's also important to make sure they follow the rules and the guidelines for the scholarship essay. But I think that's a great point that's there. Absolutely. I think some other tips students should, and parents should be aware of. 
uh, keep track of any academic success that the student has had. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're in a National Honor Society or they received any awards because of their academics, keep track of that. Get an academic resume together. Keep track of any community involvement, volunteerism. All of those things can look really good on scholarship applications. And I think sometimes students may overlook all of the great things that they're involved in in mm -hmm. high school and think that those things don't matter or won't help them on a scholarship when they do. So definitely want to put any extracurricular activities that they're doing, put all of those things in. You can get scholarships for a variety of different reasons. I mean, there's millions of scholarships out there. Mm -hmm. It just takes the time to look for them and to apply for them. So let me talk just a little bit more on the academic resume, because some people may not know what that is. Mm -hmm. So I always, when I'm explaining it, I say it's sort of like an electronic, if you, if you can put it in electronic form, like a one or two sheeter that's going to highlight your, your successes over your high school journey from ninth grade to through 12th grade. And it generally keeps the information, holds the information that most scholarship organizations ask for. Like you mentioned, like your, your academic successes, your extracurricular ac activities, even community service. If a student did community service, list the name of the organization. With whom did you do it with? How many hours? If all of that information is housed in one key location, it makes it easier also for the student then to plow through those scholarships. They don't always have to start from scratch trying to remember, okay, which activity was I involved in? What were my SAT scores the last time I had taken them? Where's my GPA? And that way it's it's so easy, I think, to not forget some of your successes. Like you said, you may not remember what you did in ninth grade if you have to think of it on the cuff. cuff. Absolutely. But if you can look back at that documentation, it makes it so much easier. Um, and then another thing I also say is once you have that academic resume, I tell students, if you need to have someone write a letter of recommendation for you, because a lot of scholarship organizations ask for that, even trying to get into the school for admissions, they'll say, have someone write a letter of recommendation. I always say, share your academic resume with them because it makes it easier for them to really pinpoint the things that um, are important about you. So they may not be able to recount all of your, your successes as a student, but if they have that academic resume, it may say, hey, yeah, I remember that happened. Let me make sure I elaborate on that as well. And then now that we're talking about the, the letter of recommendation, the other thing I say to that is for students, always think of someone um, that you know, an adult, whether it's a teacher or someone in your community, who can write a letter of recommendation for you, who can really speak on who you are as a student, your character, your abilities, um, and then ask them in advance if they will write the letter of recommendation. Also ask them how much advance notice you'll need. There is nothing worse, and I hear uh, teachers, students, um, giving information to students, to, I'm sorry, to the teachers, to the counselors, and they'll say, hey, will you write a letter, write a letter of recommendation for me? And they'll say, sure, when is it due? They'll say tomorrow morning. Right. <laughs> well, you're not really giving that <laughs> person a, a good time. Yeah, yes. You're not giving them enough time to write a strong uh, statement about who you are. So you really want to give them what they need. How much time do you need to, to get it done? And let them knock that out for you. I think that's a great point. It's really important that students try to get those letters of recommendations early mm -hmm. because the same teachers and counselors and coaches that they may be asking for the letters from, other students are also exactly. asking for those letters from those same individuals. I think it's also important for students not to wait until the scholarship application opens. Mm -hmm. You know, get this stuff in done early. That way, when your scholarship application opens, you have all of these things in place so that you can do your scholarship application on time mm -hmm. and meet that deadline. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than getting all that stuff together and then you put your application in after the deadline and you miss out on that free money. So I think that's also a really, a really important uh, point for scholarship mm -hmm. success. So if you had to think of like maybe two or three tips, top two, top three tips for a student when they're looking for scholarships, things not to forget, what would you th say they were? I would say one, focus very heavily on the local scholarships. I can't emphasize that enough only because once again, less competition. Mm -hmm. Also, don't forget to look in your local community. Mm -hmm. So just because uh, maybe your high school counselor may not be aware of a local scholarship, there could be other scholarships in your community. Check with your churches, check with different businesses in the mm -hmm. area, look around in your community for different scholarship opportunities. Maybe there's a club or an organization that your parents belong to mm -hmm. that you may be able to get a scholarship through. So I think the, the just the ability of not just relying on traditional methods of finding scholarships. Think outside the box and really hone in 
and look for those different scholarships wherever they are. I think the other tip, I think there's also a misconception that students should stop applying once they get to college. Good point. You still want to continue to look for scholarships and apply for scholarships the entire time that you're in college. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to miss out on the money once you get to college as well. So focusing on those local ones and then continue to apply once you're in college, I think are some some big tips there. I agree. So that also leads to another source. Another source that thing that we talk about is um, those post-secondary schools. Mm -hmm. Post-secondary schools also have scholarships for students. Um, so a lot of times when I tell students, like you, like you said, you continue to look while you're in school, check with the financial aid offices at the schools, find out what type of scholarships they offer. Also look on their websites, see what type of scholarships they offer, complete the forms, understand the deadlines. And then I also say, once you're in your program of study, go to your particular school. So if you're under the School of Business, go to that department to find out what, what types of scholarships they offer there as well. Um, and then in addition, you were talking about for high school students, I also say, don't just exhaust the options locally at your high school, look at other high schools. That's true. So go to yes. their websites. Mm -hmm. A lot of schools locally will have scholarships listed right there on their guidance page or the counselor's page. And a lot of times they're listing scholarships that are open to students in the county. Sometimes there are no restrictions. Maybe it's a, a student who wants to go to a post-secondary school with a GPA of 2.0. It's not always going to be your 3.5 or, you know, going to the student with the most highest, highest scores or highest SAT. So look all over. If it says it's for a Pennsylvania student, you're in PA, doesn't have to be, have to be that, that particular school um, just for those students. Grab the application and make sure that you're applying for them uh, with everything. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I also say is for the, the students and families, also know that we have a program called the Par Partnerships for Access to Higher Education. So a nice way for some students while you're looking is always go out to our, F our FIA website, look at who our PATH partners are. So there's a partnership that we'll have with uh, select college, for, for select uh, scholarship organizations and foundations who offer scholarships to, to students. And if those students are awarded those scholarships, then we'll do a dollar for dollar match up to 3,500. So if a student finds a, a scholarship through one of the local uh, organizations that happens to be our partner, and let's say they're awarded for $2,000, well, that organization will nominate the student and then they can get an additional $2,000 because they qualified and they received that scholarship. Now it's not our terms, for getting the scholarship, they have to follow the rules and the guidelines and apply through the organizations, but they still can get um, possibly the additional funding if they're awarded the money. So that's another way I tell students, you're doing half the work, getting twice the award. Right. And I think it's important for students to know that it's not necessarily just going for that big buck scholarship. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, smaller awards can add up over time. So you might get 2000 from one scholarship organization, mm -hmm. another 2000 from another scholarship organization, and all of that builds on each other. I was at a high school a couple years ago, and there was a young lady there that got $20,000 in scholarships. Now, some of the scholarship money was from the college that she was attending, mm -hmm. but most of that scholarship money was from her doing the legwork, doing those scholarship applications, and then building upon those until it equaled up to that amount. So I think that that's also important for students to know. You know, just because the scholarship may only be, you know, a couple hundred dollars, hey, a couple hundred dollars might cover a lot of your books. And that's so, a good point yes, because yes. students will say, I'll hear students say, well, it's only $100. I'm not going to bother to complete an essay for $100. It's $100. Right. You know, you don't have to repay this. But if you say it in front of their parents, their parents will say, oh, but no, you will complete that um, application because it's $100 that you don't have to cover. Right. Maybe it will cover a book. So that is a very good point. Those dollar amounts do add, those small dollar amounts, um, in fact, do add up. Yes. And I always tell families, remember, the more scholarship money you bring in, the less student loans you'll have to take out. So mm -hmm. if you look at it like that, you definitely want to Absolutely. apply for those scholarships and don't miss out. Mm -hmm. I think another misconception is that some families think that only students at the, you know, have the highest GPAs mm -hmm. are going to get the scholarship. I saw a statistic uh, last night that 30 percent of scholarships go to students mm -hmm. that have a GPA of 3.0 to 3.4. Mm -hmm. So those are definitely not just at students at the top of their class. So, you know, again, a lot of the um, 
A lot of the ways you're going to get the scholarship is by simply just putting that application forward because you don't know. You might be the only one that applied for that scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, all of these things and, and getting away from these mis misconceptions can really help students. I know when I was in college, I had those mm -hmm. misconceptions. You know, I didn't have I wasn't at the top of my class, so I thought I'm not going to be able to get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I didn't apply for one scholarship. Mm -hmm. I got one scholarship through my college that they awarded me. But other than that, I didn't fill out any scholarship applications. Took out a lot of student loans. And looking back, I wish I would have applied for these scholarships. So students, families definitely don't want to make that mistake. I totally agree. So now we're talking about looking at all the scholarships and searching. And we're talking about checking the counselor's web, uh, websites, checking in with them, going to fat. Uh, websites like Fast Web. Let's talk about the scams because when you are doing scholarship searches, sometimes it's easy to be taken in by um, a scam. Um, and I always say for students, you never really have to pay someone to find the free money. So if they're telling you up front, hey, for a small fee, we will guarantee you a scholarship. If no. they say, we need your social security number or your bank account information just to do a search, it's usually a scam. Um, I'm not sure other, if you've run across any recent scams or anything like that. I haven't seen any targeting the, targeting the students lately, but there are so many different scams that are out there. there so are. I'm sure they're coming. I actually had a parent um, that talked to me recently, and she was approached by some type of athletic scholarship organization mm -hmm. that wanted her credit card information in order to apply for the scholarships. And I said, you want to steer clear away from that. Right. You know, the scholarship organizations should be giving you money, not the other way around. So if a scholarship organization is asking for your credit card information or asking you to pay them, that's a clear indication that that is a scam. So I would steer Stay away. clear away from that. Yes. Yep, totally so that, agree with that, that is definitely out there and you want to make sure that you're not being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And another thing that's common is sometimes they'll say, hey, here's some scholarship information that you asked for, but you never asked for it. Mm -hmm. So you also be mindful of that. Sometimes they'll have things misspelled and there are lots of misspellings. Mm -hmm. Scholarship is spelled wrong. Award is spelled wrong. Um, again, another clear indication. There's so many different sites you can go to that are legitimate that I always say just avoid those that you didn't actually reach out to or, or something like that because you want to make sure that you're getting the free funds. You don't want to be taken so that your funds are given away. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think we've given a lot of great tips mm -hmm. today. Um, any other final words? Any other final tips you can think of? You know what? Of? There's one last thing that I, would, I do tell students, and I think it's really important. So when we're doing your scholarship search or you're doing any type of search and preparing for higher education, create a different email address. The oh, reason yes. I say mm -hmm. that is because if you use your same email address where you use do everything at, those scholarship notifications when they're coming in, the legitimate ones can get lost. So create one strong um, email address for yourselves. I always say make it a professional one for the students. And I'll use that for your app college applications, for your scholarship searches, different things like that, because you won't have to filter through as many and you'll be able to see the alerts. A lot of times also I tell students uh, follow up because a scholarship organization may award you via email and say, hey, you received a scholarship. But what we'll need from you in the end is we need proof of your graduation or we need for you to let us know what your um, what address mm -hmm. or what's your final school choice, what address you're going to. We need because we're going to send the funds to your school. So always make sure they're following up. So check their email addresses uh, when they're doing that. Yeah, that's a good point. And I and that just made me think of another good point, which is a lot of times when you do your scholarship applications, you're not going to hear back right away. Mm -hmm. So you might not hear back and maybe to the end of your senior year in high school. But that does, should not discourage you. Continue to apply, 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 because a lot of times you don't hear back about the scholarship until months later. Mm -hmm. So that, that's also uh, an important point for, for students and families to be aware of. Absolutely. So I think we covered pretty much everything. Also, the good part is if anyone wants more information on this, on scholarships and the searches, we actually have on our website at thea.org. There's a, an area where you'll see a little clip, clippings and videos of how to search for scholarships and some scholarship tips. We also even have it on our YouTube channel. So please check that out as well. Um, for everyone who has been listening in today, we hope you found this information to be of value. And we thank you for joining us here at the Higher Education Access Corner. We'll yes. see you soon. Thank you.